So is this what the kids today refer to when they mention the word bussy? <laughs> Uh, welcome to this week's review on Vigilantes. <laughs> this week we're reviewing episode 6 of volume 3. You and all the rules are so do I. Let me know what you thought about this episode in the comment section down below. Watch there do all the YouTube stuff that YouTube wants to do. Because YouTube is an increasing scary place for small content creators. You know what to do. Like, favorite, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. We're very close to 100 subscribers. Though after that opening joke we might lose a few. <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, on to the review itself. I'm recording this the day before my birthday, a day earlier than I usually record it, so, you know, bear that in mind <laughs> as we go forward. Anyway, we start off, as we often do, with the positives, and in this week, I feel that this episode was a, a hell of a lot of fun. It was an action-packed episode from almost start to finish, with some light character development therein, maybe not as much as I would like, but more on that later. This one was a truly action-packed episode, or at least the latter half of it was of it with the first half being some just kind of wacky fun recrawler and his mum and Mikato you know I really like the action of this week's episode I think he had a great pace to it a great design to it it's supposed to be a fast-paced series of events and it feels exactly like that quick frenetic action I and also with a good slice of well how would you do that you know the whole thing of when you watch a, a TV show or a movie and our heroes are trying to solve a problem you think to yourself hmm how would you do that how are they going to do that and that's what we get this week and into next week's because I've read a little bit ahead and I think that is fantastic I really like this this whole dynamic between engineer and crawl I think that they make a great tag team hence the double entendre with this week's title before going into this week's title I thought that the tag team was going to be a reference to crawl and Mikato working together to contain crawler's mother but that's not what we get we get crawler and engineer fighting against a new villain this week I suppose that this week's episode is just typical of how any kind of any episode with Ingenium going forward is going to be isn't it fast pace with some dynamic action and a threat that's a little bit more than just a punch it really 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 hard as has been the solution to pretty much every single threat that's come across of over the past few weeks or so i mean sure he's he's got a speed quirk so it makes sense that any episode with engineer means gonna be fast paced but you get the idea i think the whole visual spectacle of it was great Next week we get to see the res uh, the resolution towards it all. This week I I just love just how goofy this whole core concept, this whole big villain for this week is. It's it's a bus. It's a cat bus. It's like that Studio Ghibli movie that I've not seen and don't remember the name of. Yes, we have B coming back doing B things. This time uh, zapping a cat with trigger. The cat merges with the bus because. Of course it does, and I suppose if we're to look at this on a slightly deeper level, this is further confirmation that some animals can have quirks. It's, I'm surprised that a second dose of Trigger then didn't make it mutate and change more, but hey, it is what it is. The idea itself is just so batshit crazy that I can't help but find it wonderful. It's just such a nutty idea for this that I just really do love it, and I love the fact that Vigilantes is willing to just go balls out crazy like this in a way which the main series just never really did so. It's a level of creativity that I just think is wild. As I've mentioned in the past, I think that with certain stuff like the inclusion of Crawler's mother and the inclusion of Captain Celebrity, that for some people it might be a bit too much. This is another one of those moments where I can quite easily see the uh, review channel with the little animated avatar in the corner. They have a little animated anim avatar cr folding their arms and getting onto a big rant about this is the episode where Vigilantes jumped the shark or jumped the bus as that may be because, you know, bus but i still i think that this is a lot of fun it is weird it is absolutely batshit crazy but the idea that our heroes are fighting a bus possessed by a cat which became a monster due to a bee controlled by a schoolgirl is just so frigging weird that i can't help but think it's amazing goofy as hell but i really do love it in terms of the more interpersonal character dynamic stuff, we do get a bit of that towards the start of the episode with Crawler trying to do with his mum. Though granted, we get more of the aftermath of it than more so the actual event itself. 
I'm going to be blunt, I would have liked to have seen more about all of that. I know, again, this is stuff that a lot of people wouldn't want to see. They don't want to see this kind of stuff. They probably want a bit more action. Particularly bearing in mind that the past few episodes have been leaning a little bit more on the goofier and funnier side. And there's going to be a lot of people that when we get to this particular episode, as weird as it is, will be just thankful that we're getting some action after some rather character heavy, or let me use the word heavy rather loosely, episodes that we've had over the past most majority of this part of the volume. I mean, again, action sequence is great, but the fact is that we didn't really have much in the way of ca character development for me, which is a downside. But there were people that have been pissed off with the character development. Well, good thing you've got a bus. A whole bus of fun right there for you. There wasn't really much else to really discuss as far as the character drama and the character interaction, the character interpersonal doodads was really concerned. I mean, yeah, we do get some minor stuff, some fun little interactions with our characters. You know, Pop Step dropping everything to save Crawler was a cute moment, though I kind of think that they are pushing the relationship button between those two a little bit too much recently. I mean, I get it. I mean, this is happening almost immediately after the last episode, so yeah, she probably still worries that her response to Crawler not understanding that she put an F in. You know, she's now wanting to try and apologise for that. You know, I get it. I get it. I just think that they're pushing that stuff a little bit too quickly for me. I mean, we're only really three volumes into it, and I think there's another 20 or so left to go. So it's a case of, how are you going to how are you gonna do this for the remaining 17 or so ones that we got left to do with all of this? This episode was really enjoyable, I think. The fact it is as nutty and as crazy and as weird as it is, is just something that I truly do love about it. Again, I understand that it's not going to be for everybody, but at least there's some action here to just help build stuff out. Because, again, I understand that this isn't for everybody. If we are going to get into the negatives, I have to say that I do feel as though them swerve... I don't like the idea of them swerving around the whole idea of Crawler's mum. More accurately, to put that in a little bit more of a concrete sentence, I don't like the fact that the whole stuff with Crawler's mum has just been put to the back burner now. It feels as though we've missed a chance to either have more comedy or really go off on a deeper dive into the backstory of Crawler a lot more. Kind of the stuff that we got hinted to in previous week's episode. This week we don't get that. We totally swerve the ideal entirely. We just skip it. We just see them at the end of a series of events, a, a series of fun little character moments and gags and sketches. We just skipped over all of that so that we could get immediately into action. Again, I understand why they're doing this, but for me, I think that it's a missed opportunity. Particularly bear in mind, I know what the, this is going in terms of next week's episode. Next week's episode is functionally the end of this volume. Yes, there's a couple episodes after that, but they're more specials. They're the equivalent of an OVA or a spin-off episode. In the back behind the scenes stuff, it refers to it as a spin-off as a spin-off. A spin-off of a spin-off, I should say. So the fact that we're not really getting much for the remainder of this volume on what we've just seen, which is going to build up to some rather mental stuff, feels like a missed opportunity, but I'll discuss that in greater detail next week. But again, as far as this week's episode is concerned, yeah, there was the double entendre at the start of the episode with it being called Tag Team, make you think it was going to be about Crawler and Mikato working together to contain Crawler's mum and to not make her lash out or do anything weird or silly or angry. But we don't get that. We, we just almost immediately then switch to cat bus action with our supporting cast just appearing because they need to appear. Knuckle Duster's just kind of there, I mean... The thing that he does, making the cat toy out of the washing line and stuff. That's cute. That's funny. It's nice to see him get involved with this kind of stuff. Because he kind of feels as though he's been a little bit AFK for the past few weeks. But, you know, the episode itself is fine. And with that in mind, let's pivot into the conclusion, the overview, where I'll just say that I did love this episode quite a lot. Just the sheer batshit insanity and creativity on display here. Whilst it is ultimately just all in service of just one specific pop culture reference, I think is still brilliant. The way that it is put together has a dynamism to the action which really can't be beat and has a fluidity to the motions and everything that we're seeing which is brilliant. Just the sheer construction of the action sequence on a pure mechanical level is brilliant. As we saw previously when we had the episode with Stendhal doing his 
quick action sequence thing. It was done with narrow, tight panels because it was a narrow, claustrophobic fight. In this one, it's a series of smaller panels, a lot of quick cuts, because this is a very fast-paced action sequence. And I really do like that. I like how the medium itself is being used to tell the story in a way in which... I'm not sure exactly how you then replicate that in the form of an anime, unless you have some truly visionary uh, directors working on this, which, if it ever does get an anime, I fear that's not going to be the case, because I think it's just going to be your, your typical uh, meat and potatoes animation team, which, whilst they might be great and good and infinitely better than anything I could have ended up doing, you know, at the same time, it's not going to drag this out to one of the most memorable fight sequences and action sequences in the series, which if there isn't, it's more than just an extended pop culture gag, as I mentioned previously, but it could be done in a truly wild and wacky way. But we'll see how it all goes. I mean, one of the things I'm curious about is actually exactly how you balance all of this stuff out, because, you know, let's be honest, this episode ends on a cliffhanger. If this did get an anime, would this end as a cliffhanger for next week's episode or next week's episode and this one be merged into one to make one single concrete story i don't know i will say that if this ever did get an anime i would like it if the stuff we call as mum was built out a little bit more in this episode rather than just doing it as a hand wave and going oh yeah they just saw some sights and did a little bit of gift shopping Woo! missed opportunities galore Unless they bring her back in a few episodes time and then we get to see a little bit more of all this, but we'll soon see. While that's said and done, let us get into Comment Corner! <laughs> it's time for Comment Corner and back once again like a renegade master. It's Big X1 who says, I don't mind how silly things get at this point, but I do wish something more serious would happen soon. Thank you for the comment, and I feel that this episode and this whole mini-arc and hell, this entire volume at this point has been a little bit more of a palette cleanser arc. Something that I've mentioned in the past when I've been referring to My Hero Academia, and to a certain degree when I've been doing reviews of Doctor Who, where we're basically in a small little period where we're just refreshing things slightly. We've had some bigger, heavier stuff previously. This is just a moment for us to just get back to basics and just have something to help us process everything that's gone in the past so that something bigger and heavier can happen in a little bit shorter details of time, which might well be the case because we're getting towards the end of this volume the next couple the next episode is the last prop episode of this volume and the two episodes after that are effectively ovas as i mentioned previously so we're not getting anything as big and heavy until next volume when we eventually get around to that i'm not entirely sure as far as these, these reviews are concerned but anyway thank you for your comment if you want to leave a comment you can do so by just going to the comment section down below as i mentioned previously tomorrow when i'm recording this is my birthday so unless someone has left the comment very last minute or closer to the usual release time this is just the comment section as it stands you know i do re-record stuff if the need comes up to it so if you want to leave a comment, by all means, leave it. You could leave it almost an hour before I make my video. Or while I let the hour video go out or something. I don't know. I'm getting a little bit tired. This has been a very long recording session for me, despite the fact the video itself isn't especially long. But anyway, thank you all for listening and see you next time. Goodbye! Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, favourite, subscribe, click the bell and do all the YouTube stuff that YouTube wants you to do. Go on, it'll do me a power of good. Until next time, my friends, goodbye! Bye!